Hey friends, this is Micah Thompson of the Chaparral Vortex Owners Group. Uh, one thing I've noticed in our group is we have a lot of people who come into our group looking for help, which is awesome. We love we love providing help, but it seems a lot of people are just not well versed in uh, the workings of a jet boat, basics of how a jet boat work. And I figured I'd do a real short video here just showing you the basics of jet propulsion and how it works in the context of a uh, Chaparral Vortex, which has a, a BRP Rotax engine. So what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through the propulsion system, uh, the very basis of how it works, how it works, and um, how the controls work, the steering, reverse, and things like that. So this shouldn't take too long. Uh, hopefully it will help you guys out when you have problems, or if you have problems, or just it's good just to understand your boat, how it works. So this is my Vortex. Uh, this is a 2020 Chaparral Vortex 223 my baby it's got twin 300 engines just love this boat love this boat so bad so much so uh anyway let me get right to it and we'll go from there all right so here i am behind my boat uh, staring at the uh, two jet pumps on the back kind of the heart and guts of how the boat works uh, i'm going to show you in a minute the the full route of the water that goes through here and how the actual how the boat is actually propelled but if you notice there's no propellers back here no propellers to hit anybody and that's one of the big advantages of a jet boat uh, very good safety wise you don't have to worry about your kid getting in the water anybody really and getting hit by a propeller uh, or marine sea life anything like that they're one of the safest boats out there that's one of the reasons they're becoming so popular uh, it's great no propellers back here nothing to uh, to hurt you so let me just kind of show you the, the basics of how the jet pump works uh, how it pushes the boat forward like I say, you notice there is no propeller. Uh, so what happens here is this is one of my jet engines, that's my, star, my starboard jet engine. So water is actually pulled into the bottom of the boat down there. I'm gonna actually get up there in a minute and show you where that's done. So when the engine's running, it's gonna pull water into that right there. It's called an intake grate. It's gonna pull water in there. Uh, the velocity of the water is increased as it goes through this jet pump. You'll see how it goes through what's called a venturi. Uh, so the diameter shrinks down and the physics say when you shrink the diameter down of the water moving through there, the velocity increases. So then it shoots the water out of this jet nozzle in the back, uh, pushing the boat forward. You know, Newton's law of motion. Uh, if you push the water out the back, the boat has to go the other direction. So it shoots water out the back. That's why it's called a jet boat. And uh, that's how it propels you. So let me crawl underneath the boat. I'm gonna stick my camera up in there and just show you kind of the guts of the system. All right, guys, so here I am underneath the boat. This is the back of the boat right here. This is the front of the boat up that direction. So I'm laying under the back of the boat under one of my intakes. So this is called an intake grate. So as the boat is running, the impeller, the jet is gonna suck water into this intake on the bottom of the boat. You see, this is called an intake grate. Uh, this is designed to protect large things from getting sucked up in there. Uh, logs, sticks, anything like that. So this is to protect it. So up inside of there, it's the actual impeller, uh, which which uh, propels the water. So I'm gonna try to stick the camera up in there if I can. And hopefully you can see it. So if you notice right there, let me try to get a good angle. So what you have there is an impeller. It's like a propeller, but it's actually enclosed in a tunnel, uh, making it very efficient. So the water gets pulled in here and you'll see the impeller there uh actually shoots it out the back and if you'll notice uh, around the impeller is a, on this particular model it's yellow but that's called the wear ring so what that's designed to do is provide a tight clearance between the impeller and the outer walls of the tunnel uh, so you get high efficiency and that that wear ring also is designed uh, to be softer than, impe than the impeller so if you suck up debris small rocks sticks things like that the wear ring will often uh, take damage before the impeller does. So it's important to notice that uh, both of these parts are replaceable parts. Uh, they're designed to wear out over time, uh, depending on how clean the water is you're in. They, they may last for years. Uh, if you, if you uh, boat in water that's fairly dirty with lots of debris, uh, they can also wear out quicker than that. So that's the intake. Uh, you'll see that silver piece coming out right there that's actually the, the drive shaft coming out of the engine 
So the engine's inside the boat there, it's connected directly to that impeller. That is connected directly to the shaft of the engine. So there is no transmission and that's another uh, advantage for a jet boat, uh, reliability wise. There's no transmission to go out or maintain. Uh, that lowers your maintenance costs. Uh, just makes them a much simpler, simpler device over boats that have a transmission. So let me move to the back and we'll talk a little more about this. All right, so here we are on the business end of the system. After the water has been sucked up on the intake grate in the bottom, it gets propelled out the back right here. So if you look in here inside, you can actually see the same impeller that I was just showing you from the back side. I'm sorry, from the bottom, the front side, uh, the back side of it. So the water, there's the uh, wear ring there. You can see it's yellow. So the water gets sucked up there and it's pushed through this system here. If you notice, there's veins in there which straighten out the water and the diameter is greatly decreased. So the physics indicate if the same amount of water is being pushed through a smaller diameter tube, that's gonna increase the velocity. So the water is gonna shoot out the back, uh, push the boat forward, uh, you know, per Newton's law. So that's the way it works. So you, you, know, you might ask, you know, if the water comes out the back, uh, how does it steer? And that's accomplished via what's called a steering nozzle right here. This nozzle turns right or left. Uh, which redirects the water either to the right, which will make the boat turn to the right, or if this goes to the left, the uh, uh, thrust will get directed to the left, which makes the boat turn to the left as well. So, uh, like I say, it's important to know uh, the way the system works. Uh, like I say, there's no transmission at all. The impeller is hooked directly to the engine. So if the engine is running, this boat is producing thrust, and that's something you have to remember. Uh, you can't put it in neutral like a boat with a transmission. So uh, you have to ask, well, how do I go in reverse? You know, how do I sit still? How do I go in neutral? And that's accomplished uh, with what's right here with these miraculous uh, BRP Rotex. They're called reverse buckets or reverse gates. And I'm going to show you how those operate here in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to show you how the steering works. And uh, uh, so let me get up to that. But the, the main thing to remember is the boat's always producing thrust when the engine is running. What you're doing is just directing that thrust. So you direct the thrust right or left with the steering nozzle. You can direct the thrust down or back forward uh, to hold the boat still. And I'll show you that in a minute. But first, let me show you how the steering works and how you steer a jet boat. All right, so here I am in the, the cab of my Vortex at the helm. So I want to show you what, what happens when you turn the steering wheel. So the steering wheel here, is connected via steering cable to the uh, nozzle in the back. So watch this. You turn the wheel to the right, you're going to get the nozzle going to the right as well. And that redirects the jet thrust. Conversely, you go to the left, the nozzle turns to the left. It's a very simple process. The steering wheel just turns the nozzle in the back, right or left. It's simple. It's, it's, it's a uh, mechanical system. There's no electronic boost. You just have a steering cable with a rack and pinion which turns the nozzle in the back so you always have to remember since you're steering with thrust you don't have any steering if the boat turns off there is no rudder so your thrust is actually what steers the boat it's also important to remember because of that the slower you're going the less responsive the steering is going to be so uh, one thing i like to tell people is when you're idling around the boat starts uh response slows way down you can give it a little bit of thrust and make it steer a little bit better so Steering is always a combination of your steering input on the throttle, I'm sorry, your steering input on the wheel and the amount of thrust you're giving it. Those two are tied together, so it's important to remember. That's, that's how the steering works on one of these boats. So now we're gonna move to the uh, reverse system, how that functions. All right, so let's talk a little bit how shifting works in a Rotax jet boat. So as you can see now, I have the gear shifting forward. That's how I've been showing you the whole time. Uh, the reverse bucket is all the way up so right now all the thrust is being directed straight out the back of the boat but if you'll notice this what about when i go to neutral when i go to neutral you'll notice the bucket drops down to about a 45 degree angle so at that place half of the thrust is going to be hitting that bucket and that bucket if you'll notice the design of it it redirects the thrust out the sides and to the forward of the boat so what that does is you have half the thrust going out the back of the boat half of the thrust going forward and your boat essentially will sit still so that's the power of the system and that's how even though the uh, jet is producing thrust all the time uh, you're able to control that thrust and, and sit in one position so when you want to go backwards you bring this all the way back 
as you'll notice the reverse bucket is now all the way down so 100% of the thrust is going to be hitting that reverse bucket and it's going to be uh, directed toward the front of the boat and the boat's actually going to back up so let me go through it again at the neutral position that's 40 about a 45 degree angle half the thrust goes forward half of it goes backwards you're going to set in one position when you go forward the bucket goes all the way up all the thrust is allowed to go out the back and propel the boat forward so that's it that is the reverse gate operation that's all there is to it i'm going to go through it a few more times and i'm going to take some close-up pictures of the linkage and show you kind of the basics of it but it's a very simple system you got neutral the bucket sits there 45 degree angle reverse it goes all the way down that's it you're just redirecting the thrust either uh nothing at all all the way up so the thrust can go out the back of the boat you're redirecting half of the thrust uh forward so you stay in neutral uh, if you're all the way in reverse then uh, all the thrust is going forward so here's something else many people don't realize this is not like a, a boat with a transmission this is a big advantage to a boat like this once you're in neutral you do not have to put the boat all the way into the forward gear like you do in a boat with a transmission it's not all or nothing so this space between neutral and forward is usable space so if you'll notice i can start creeping forward with my lever here slowly and the bucket is going to move slowly as well so this gives you a type of power basically an infinite range between neutral and forward to control your boat you can make the boat inch forward at a, at a snail's pace when you're going on the trailer when you're pulling up to the dock you don't have to like a normal boat you don't have to go all the way into forward uh, where you're either all or nothing you can actually sit here and just control this lever back and forth small amounts like that and you can make your boat go all the way from idling in forward uh, down to nothing so it's an infinite range the same thing for reverse you can slowly pull that lever back and you can control that bucket all the way in the range between neutral and then all the way down in reverse this is a power that only uh, the rotax uh, jet boat has and you've got to learn to use this if you learn to use this power how you can control the bucket between full forward position and slowly move it back forward like this you can literally creep your boat at any speed you want to you can move it onto the trailer like i say literally at a snail's pace and put it right on there every time and uh, there's one thing about the steering i didn't mention it's important to know and this is one thing that's unique and awesome about a rotex powered jet boat it's even when you're in neutral or reverse anytime you can be in neutral there's full reverse you can go to neutral but anytime you're in any gear the engine is always pumping thrust remember that so the boat will actually steer even when you're in neutral so if you're sitting in neutral like right now at a 45 degree angle when you turn the steering wheel back and forth like this you're redirecting the thrust right and left within that reverse nozzle and the boat can actually spin in place so you can actually sit still slightly rotate the steering to the right and the boat will spin to the right and uh you can literally do a 90 180 a 360 degree turn in place and go whichever way you want to go forward reverse it will do this at any speed any direction and that's something no other boat has and that's unique to the rotax uh reverse bucket system and that's why they are so controllable now the, the drawback being uh it takes a little bit of time to get used to that but once you master it you master uh, the skill of feathering your your uh, bucket here at any position you want combined with the fact you can steer the thrust at any time you can literally make the boat move sideways you can make it spin uh, you can just bring it right into the dock it's just the most amazing thing ever so uh, this one thing to keep in mind is you're re redirecting thrust the thrust is always there uh, so you're turning it right or left like this you're redirecting it fore and aft using your reverse bucket here so you just have to practice combine these two together and what i recommend everybody do uh, before they uh, get used to one of these boats when they first buy one or it's new to them uh, get away from the dock go out in the water uh, find yourself a buoy or something floating uh, that's very forgiving and just get close to it with your boat practice backing up to it with your boat practice coming in sideways just real slowly uh, coming up to that buoy and that will give you a lot of practice on how these things uh, function and another thing to remember uh, when these boats are going slow like i mentioned is uh, you are steering with thrust so you got to be very careful the slower you go the less steering is going to respond so so what i like to show people you won't realize this when you're idling along 
if the boat is not responding like you want it to, you turn. You want it to turn a little quicker, go ahead and just give it a little bit of gas. Just bump the gas a little bit. You may be in forward. Just bump the gas a tiny bit. Just rev it one, one like that. And uh, that will give you just a little extra thrust to spin the boat around. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. So don't be scared to use your throttle along with your steering, even when you're idling along. The two are infinitely, uh, they're actually tied together. So uh, let me go to the back and I'm going to show you guys a little more details uh, of the linkage and how that works. Let me put it in reverse and uh, just show you how the linkage works. All right, guys, real quickly. So I'm back here to the back again, holding the GoPro. And, uh, I want to kind of try to show you these buckets. So if you're looking from the side, you can see how the water redirects. So if you look at it from here, you can see how the water uh, gets redirected. It hits right there, goes through that, and comes out the side. It's side thrusters, likewise over here. So as you're turning this nozzle, right or left, actually have more water coming out this side or coming out this side. So that's why you're able uh, to steer the boat even when you're sitting still or in reverse so well is what these uh, reverse buckets. So this is how they look when they're all the way down in reverse. On a twin engine boat, they're tied together. And something I hadn't brought up yet, a single engine boat, everything is the same, except you do not have two reverse buckets like this. You have a single reverse bucket that is symmetrical. So it looks pretty much like the right side of this bucket on both sides. It's a symmetrical single bucket. It looks a little bit different than this, but the concept is exactly the same. So. So real quickly, I wanna show you the linkage and how this works. So you have a cable coming out. See it coming out of the transom right there. This is the reverse cable. It just comes out here. It moves in and out right here. On the newer boats like this one, it's, it's what's called INR, Intelligent Neutral in Reverse. You have an E-Reverse Servo electronically moving this in and out. So it's just attached right here on this point and it just moves the bucket up and down when this cable goes in and out. So common problems, you're gonna make sure everything stays tight here this nut here can back off check all these nuts and bolts everywhere it attaches here this one has to stay tight all these bolts it's very important on a boat you check everything all your fasteners on a regular basis uh, but boats vibrate they're in much harsher conditions than a car so you want to check everything some of the problems i've seen some people this stuff will get loose they won't maintain it their gates won't go all the way up so if the gate's not all the way up, when you give it throttle, you have a huge amount of thrust coming out here. It can hit the bucket, which is only partially up, and it can do damage here, break some of this stuff. Uh, I saw one the other day where the, they let this uh, bolt over here on the end get loose. So this end of the bucket came out, ripped the whole bucket off. So it's very important you maintain everything. And likewise, the steering operates under a similar principle. You have a cable coming out of the transom right there. The cable simply moves in and out right here as you turn the steering wheel and pushes the throttle, I'm sorry, it pushes the steering nozzle back and forth, left and right. Super simple, everything's simple. You only have two moving parts back here. This nozzle goes right or left. This bucket goes up and down and that's all there is to it. So uh, there's various adjustments that can be made here. Uh, if you have to physically adjust it, this is where the adjustment is made right here. This is a brass nut uh, and I have a procedure uh, about that in our files library so that's all there is to it you want to make sure all your fasteners are kept tight and uh if you'll notice this is what's called the forward locking mechanism i have it defeated the plate is removed per that service bulletin so this does not lock in the upward position like they used to so that's the basics of it it's, it's a very simple process uh, simple device uh, water's pulled in the bottom it shoots out the back and you redirect the thrust. Right or left with the steering nozzle, uh, fore and aft with these reverse buckets that move up and down like you saw. It's very simple. It's important to keep all this tightened and make sure they operate like I showed you right there. It's very easy to check. So if you have any questions, let us know. You know hopefully this video helped you out a little bit in understanding your jet boat. Uh, have a great day. And uh, once again, this is Micah Thompson from the uh, Vortex, Chaparral Vortex Owners Group.